Hey, and good afternoon. This is Angela from Ask a House Cleaner, and I'm super excited that you guys have joined me today. Today, I'm here with Sherry Cedar, and she is brilliant, and I'm super excited to have her back. She runs one of the largest cleaning companies, commercial cleaning companies in the state of Florida that's independently owned and operated, and she runs the business with her husband, and she's just a wealth of information. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is wonderful to be here as Super Treat, and I love your background. I will just continue to say that it's brilliant, colorful and cheery and happy, which is what cleaning should represent. Aside from being a people business, the commercial cleaning industry has some differences from residential cleaning, which is also a people business. So yes. if all things being equal, and let's assume that everybody everywhere wants to get value for what they pay for. They want to get a clean service that they don't have to follow behind people and go, hey, you missed a spot, right? They want what they're paying for and they want it to be done properly every time. And they are expecting you to show up and be reliable and be safe and be accurate every single time. But tell us a little bit about the types of properties that you guys clean, because most of what we do at Savvy Cleaner is residential. They are homes. Some of them are big homes and some of them are multifamily homes. So there might be Airbnbs, there might be duplexes, apartment complexes and things like that typically not like dentist offices or schools or daycares or things like that. So tell us about the properties that you have. Well, first of all, in terms of residential, we do do a lot of condominium associations and homeowner associations, which is, you know, people's apartments together and common areas. So we do deal with that in the residential side quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We do medical. So that means medical facilities and hospitals. A lot of schools, ranging from university, high school, preschool, single-tenant, multi-tenant buildings, industrial, like big industrial warehouse areas, corporate headquarters, and auto dealerships. I think those are the verticals. Whoa. All right. So there's a lot of different <laughs> stuff there, a lot of stuff to yes. unpack. So tell us for some of the similarities so that as we can kind of see like, hey, what are the differences on things we think we know? Tell us about the condominiums in the apartment complexes where you have multifamily units there and you deal with the common areas. What types of common areas do you clean? A gym, a clubhouse, the entryway, the hallways, the common area, bathrooms, elevators, stairwells. Wow. Okay, cool. That's really different from a lot of the <laughs> stuff that we do. So how do you guys bid a job like that? You know, every property is different. In a residential, generally you walk in, you figure out the square footage, how long it's going to take you, you do a price. So it's somewhat similar in commercial. Just like residential, you walk the property beforehand. You would never give a price without seeing it mm -hmm. because you don't know what type of floors they have. You don't know what countertops they have. You don't know how many tchotchkes they have or fine things, or is it very industrial and concrete? So anyway, you walk the property. Oftentimes, a commercial property will have an RFP, request for proposal, and they have a scope of work already outlined. And they generally have an idea, do they want day porter services? A day porter is somebody who's on property during business hours versus nighttime cleaning. And they're generally the upkeep of the building during the day. You know, so you go to the bathroom, there's toilet paper. There's not mud on the floor. So once you get all of your details, your facts and your figures, you go back then and you factor in how many bodies you need, how many hours you need. Then you put in all of your tax, social security. There's a word for all of that bundled together, but you add that in. And then you add a percentage of what's your margin. Margins are not huge in this industry. Oftentimes, you're looking at volume business. And then we put together a proposal. We use something called PandaDocs, which is this amazing proposal software. I love it. And we put in all of the elements, you know, is it Monday through Friday, et cetera. Send it off. That's how we bid. Great advice, as always. Oh, I love this. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me here today. Thank you, Sherry. This has been enlightening and informational and entertaining. So thank you. I appreciate you guys dropping in today to visit with us and to share this information. So until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you find yes. it. Yes, shine brighter. <laughs>